live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE, covering Cisco Live 2018. Brought to you by Cisco, NetApp, and theCUBE's ecosystem partners. Welcome back, this is Stu Miniman, and you're watching theCUBE's coverage of Cisco Live 2018 in Orlando, Florida. Happy to welcome to the program, welcome back to the program first, Vinu Thomas, who's the CTO of Presidio, and welcome to the program for the first time, Brad Hazinski, who's a general manager with Intel. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Stu, for having us. All right, so we're, we're about the midway point of the show. Uh, it had actually been many years since I'd been at Cisco Live, 26,000 people here, seeing a large transformation in what's going on from Cisco, you know, still dominant in the network space, but talk a lot about cloud, we're here in the DevNet zone, yep. where uh, you know, the, one of the big news uh, pieces was 500,000 developers registered on the platform here. What, what, what's your take been of the show so far? Yeah, I mean, Presidio has been a, a long-term partner with Cisco. We've been a gold and master partner for the longest time. Uh, as Cisco started to really transition into this software-defined world, Presidio started investing along with Cisco. So back at the DevNet zone, you'll find that Presidio has a number of showcase items uh, about DevOps, especially on things like Cat 9K and Hyperflex. So we are excited on this partnership with Cisco and with Intel and what we are trying to do, so good times. Yeah, Brad, Brad same for you. No, absolutely, I think this is my fifth Cisco Live, um, and uh, seeing the evolution of Cisco as they traverse from uh, becoming a hardware-centric company into a company that's truly evolving around software and services and capabilities. As the world becomes more complicated, they're, they're truly innovating in ways to create the business outcomes that customers are looking for in these complicated environments. And as Intel, it's been really exciting because we transform into a data-centric company. We talk a lot about that. Uh, the Intel technology has been the underpinning of many of the Cisco technologies that are continuing down, down this path. And of course, our great partnership with Presidio, uh, it just, it's a great triangulation effect and it's great to see at Cisco Live. Yeah, Vinu, change isn't always easy. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think back actually, you know, I, I've worked a long, long time on the vendor side. And when Cisco came out with UCS and started doing things like vBlock, you know, there were some folks at Presidio who were like, we make a lot of money racking, stacking, cabling these solutions. Converged infrastructure, hyper-converged infrastructure, cloud solutions. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about the, the, the partnership, how Presidio's uh, been you know, helping to expand and mature uh, with, with these offerings. Yeah, you know, the, the, the whole digital transformation is the one that's driving this, you know, move from you know, legacy three-tier architecture into converge, into hyper-converge, into multi-cloud. And what we've, uh, what we've realized along this journey is we had to transform ourselves. So we went from saying, you know, look, we, we wanted to be the number one digital transformation solutions provider, building secure digital infrastructure in a multi-cloud world. And for us to be in a position to put that vision into execution, we had to really partner with Cisco, partner with companies like VMware and VBlock and uh, obviously the other, other providers on the hyper-convert space and also with Intel to really try and you know, take our ability to not just rack and stack but to design solutions. So we created what we call as Presidio Data Center Solution Set where we bring all this together. We're able to do some custom modification on these things and we had to do that because that's what our customers were asking us for. And then wrap that around with managed services so we can essentially offer a true platform as a service. Yeah, I'd love to hear from your viewpoint. What are your customers saying to you when you know, they say, you know, I, I, I've got a cloud strategy or I'm building my cloud strategy. What does that mean to them? What's important to them? And you know, I'm sure you've got we, solutions that fit. Yeah, you we, we, you know, Stu, we've seen, a, we've seen a slight change. It used to be that it was a cloud first strategy. And now I would kind of call it as a cloud right strategy, which is let me choose the right cl uh, cloud for the right type of workload, make sure that I have an optimized workload placement in which cloud. And one of the value adds that we bring is we can evaluate all those workloads and applications and your use cases like your data center and then recommend to you in partnership with Cisco and with Intel what is the right placement for your workload. Now when you look at what is coming up in the future is you know, the world is getting into containers. And you look at Cisco's strategy with containers, you know, their Cisco container platform, what they're doing with Google, uh, Presidio is right in the center of that along with Intel, where we are building solutions in a multi-cloud fashion, so Hyperflex for the on-prem, running on top of Hyperflex is a Cisco container platform, and then we are able to then take that and merge that with Google Cloud. That's what customers want. They want that flexibility to say, if this is the workload that needs to be on-prem, great. If this is something that I need to move as my applications get container rights, that's what they want to go to. 
Yeah, and Brad, I mean, you, you've got a large team playing in all of these environments. I remember, you know, optimizations for virtualization back in the day, when I was first learning about containers, Intel Developer Forum was one of the places I went to go learn about this. It, build on what Vinu was saying as to, you know, where your teams are, are, are making bets and helping to, you know, optimize and build solutions for customers. No, absolutely, I think, I think Vinu said it very well, I, it, especially if you auger in on the world of cloud. One of the challenges I think enterprise customers have really had is it's about cloud economics. Yep. I think that's basically the underpinning of what Venu was talking about is that the, the economies of scale and capability of the large public cloud service providers um, have, have, have caused most enterprise customers to pause. So I think what customers are really looking for is how do I deploy uh, applications with scalability, with ease of deployment while having policy around security, networking, compute, storage, et cetera. Um, and then move the applications around the data center. What's, what Intel does is we work very closely with Cisco as they're designing a lot of these platforms. Hyperflex as an example is, you know, the utilizing, best utilizing some of the underpinnings of the C compiler or whether it's the uh, ISL instruction set, the storage acceleration libraries, which are part of the CPU telemetry in which they can, you know, take the code from SpringPath and really fine tune it to get the best performance. And then by the time, you know, Presidio gets it uh, in house, they further fine tune it for the customer needs. And so it's just a great triangulation and then we want to scale, when Cisco scales in the market, Intel wins um, across the entire stack of compute, network, and storage. So therefore, uh, it's just, a, it's, it's very, very, um, you know, we're all in the same boat rowing it's in the same direction. It's a very good cohesive partnership. Yes, yeah, it, cohesiveness. It, it, it's so funny, because so much of this wave, we, we talk a lot about simplicity. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, oh well, you know, HCI and public cloud, we're going to make it really simple, it's going to be heterogeneous. Some people are like, oh, remember it was, you know, white box and nothing fancy. It's like, underneath the covers, there's a lot that goes in to make sure that it's, I, I say we're in a world of hyper-optimization. Yes. Um, because there's a lot of things that have to, to talk a little bit about that yeah, balance. So, so yeah. a perfect example of that is uh, what we built in partnership with Intel and Cisco is a Presidio data center solution set. So the challenge our customers were having is, yeah, it's great to get a hyperconverge, but the hyperconverge has to plug into something. It has to be on a rack, it has to be, you know, power cooling has to be measured. You know, we have to get telemetry data, you know, using Intel CPU. So what we decided to do was we built a, a custom-based solution, call it a cloud in a box, with hyperconverged, with the networking gear in it, with advanced software solutions, with power cooling and we wrapped around our professional services and managed services. And what we also helped our customers to do is, if they decided that they want to consume this as a service in an OPEX model, we could do that. If they wanted to do it in a CAPEX, we could do that. So we made it very flexible, because it's not just about hyperconverge. Hyperconverge has to connect, hyperconverge has to be load balanced, then there's a possibility that you want to connect to a GCP or an AWS, so there was a lot of things that we could, we could do with that. Yeah, uh, Brad, we, we Talk about customers want to have a similar operating model, whether it's in their data center or you know outside of their environment. Uh, you know, I think Intel at the at the bottom layer helps, but how do you help make sure there's there's flexibility as customers choose all of their various solutions in a multi-cloud world? Well, first and foremost, I think that has a lot to do with we have a significant partnership with most of the public cloud service providers. It's no secret that you know whether it's GCP, it's AWS, or it's Azure, or even Baidu, Alibaba, Tencent that. These, these data centers are built upon Intel technologies. Uh, and then as you get back into the on-prem data center at the enterprise, the close work we do uh, with, with Cisco and with partners like Presidio, I'll give you a perfect example, is when you look at one of the strengths Cisco's had traditionally over the years, it's this developer community. And it was the developer community what seems to have been born in networking, in the networking spaces, and it's really created scale for Cisco. Well, as you look at the nascent technologies, um, there's two things we see. One is application developers inside of the enterprise IT don't have a simple way to build applications. So they go do a, a swipe on AWS, start an instantiation and write an application. But with things like OpenShift and working with Cisco on a Red Hat enterprise easy DevOps platform, or things like container development. We work very closely with, Go with Google and GKE on the Kubernetes development and the Kubernetes engine as well as with Cisco. And so then when you bring that all together and you say, now we have a developer community of a technology which is clearly the future, which is containers. And Cisco working with Intel, Cisco working with Presidio, Intel working with Presidio, it, it's really a three-legged stool and how do we refine the capabilities and also help define the future roadmap requirements mm -hmm. in order to become, uh, add more value for the customers. And I think that's a, just to you know, piggyback to what Brad said, I think that's a key aspect too, right, is 
when you look at our customers, when they ask us to come up with stuff, Cisco, Presidio, Intel, we are not shy to make those investments because there might be customer requirements that are very unique and it's almost bespoke that we have to work on those kind of solutions and it's great to have partners that are ready to invest with us and make those investments and you know, make those changes. Great, I uh, want to give you both a final word. What, what should we look for going forward? You know, what, what, some areas maybe that you're pushing new solutions in. You talked about uh, you know, analytics and the like. Yep. Uh, what, what should we look for uh, as the partnership continues to grow in the future? Yeah, so you know, when you look at Presidio's go-to-market here, we, we are focused on three, three key areas. One is digital infrastructure, multi-cloud, and then security. And in addition, we want to really focus on data analytics and business insights. So digital infrastructure for us is the whole software-defined infrastructure that's getting more and more automated and orchestrated. Uh, Multi-cloud, you know, you're going to see us make more investments in container technology as well as working with uh, companies like Google and Intel in the whole GKE, uh, the Google Kubernetes uh, engine. Um, and then in the security part, at the end of the day, everything that we do has to be secure. It's not about putting point products, it has to be a, a full-fledged strategy. And then the last thing our customers are asking us is, We've built us this software-defined infrastructure in a multi-cloud along with security. Uh, can you give me business insights? So this is where we're working very closely with uh, Intel and Cisco uh, on Tetration, which is the whole network flow and security analytics that you know, obviously is powered by the, uh, the telemetry from Intel CPUs. And you're going to see us make more investments there with Tetration, with you know, obviously App Dynamics and companies like Splunk. So I, I think that's what you're going to see us do a lot in the future. Yeah, and I, I think well said, Vinu, and I think at a very basic level, um, all of the software, all the complexity, all of the security is going to require more insatiable uh, desire for compute. But, but Intel is clearly investing beyond compute. Uh, we're very open about becoming a data-centric company, looking at about how this tidal wave of data is coming in a world of billions of connected devices. So as Intel continues to invest, whether it's in FPGAs, storage, memory technologies, you know, we, we, the, the blog for the launch of Hyperflex 3.5 just went out, an all NVMe version uh, of Hyperflex, and then we're going to talk on Thursday about uh, using Optane, Intel Optane technology as a caching tier. Yep. Uh, FPGAs, uh, over into silicon photonics technology. There's just a wealth of capabilities in silicon that Intel's bringing the market to bear and working with our partners, again like Presidio, uh, to understand, by the way, the way we do uh, business at Intel is we have an account team that also calls on Presidio. And what we do is our team triangulates with them. So Presidio is understanding the future roadmap of technologies from Intel. At the same time, Cisco is understanding it. Cisco then can innovate on platforms based on Intel technologies, but as Presidio knows what's coming down the pike, they can start building their plans for how they can then take it from Cisco's hands, further uh, encapsulate it into a valuable offering, say cloud in a box, as you yep, said yep. so well, and deliver uh, easy business outcomes for the customers. Yep. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Uh, for for a long time, we watched the TikTok uh, coming out of Intel as what drove innovation and uh, d you know new advancement in the industry. Now everyone's moving faster. E even Intel, uh, you know, it's not the chip itself uh, that is the you know driving factor of, of all the change. So, Brad Vinu, thank you so much for joining thank you, us. Sue, thank you so Absolutely. much. Thank really you, appreciate Stu. all Thanks the updates and con yeah. congrats on the progress. Thank you. Thank all you. right, we'll be back here with lots more coverage. Three days wall-to-wall -wall coverage of Cisco Live 2018 here in Orlando. I'm Stu Miniman and. Thanks so much for watching theCUBE.